Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Mandy Chessel um, and this is my colleague Dan Wolfson. We work for a company called Pragmatic Data Research Limited and we're both closely associated with a project called Ageria. Um, the topic today is actually about three open source projects. Ageria is obviously one of them. Another is a project called Open Lineage and the third is Marquez. And all three of these projects are part of the LF AI and Data Foundation. So we're sort of closely related and, and this is really an example of a collaboration that we uh, put together to show a broader value than each one of the projects could produce. Uh, we call it truly open lineage because it's all about creating traceability between the execution of, um, of work across different uh, different workloads and that sounds quite simple but actually to really be able to use and analyze it it's a complex problem so the plan today is to take you a little bit through what lineage is um, some of the challenges and then what we've managed to achieve uh, together with the three projects all right so yes very simple <laughs> what it is what we did uh, and what we got from it <laughs> so let's start with the definition of lineage um, so let's think about what we what could be happening. So here we have three regions of a company all doing very well. All the graphs are going up. But when the CEO looks at the combination, something strange has happened. The data is going, you know, the, the, the graph is going down. So something is wrong. The question is, where is it wrong and what is wrong? Are the values incorrect? Where are they incorrect? <laughs> Something's inconsistent. What's happened is the, the, uh, uh, the way that the data is being combined causing some sort of, you know, are they, all the units the same, anything like that? Um, or is there something missing? Has one of the regions not actually reported any numbers? And these are the types of questions you get when data doesn't look right um, and where lineage can help. There are other questions as well, you know, are these coming from the right sources? Are the schemas matching? You know, are we actually <laughs> tying different, the wrong types of data together? Um, and we also need to understand um, whether it's right in the question of time. So it's not just did it flow from the right place, but did it flow in a timely enough manner that the aggregation worked correctly? Um, and often, once you know these things, there are follow-on questions that you can answer. Uh, so like, okay, this, this data is wrong. Who, who, who do I talk to? So who owns that data? Um, and uh, also if I own data, I need to know who's using it. So if I need to change things, I can, um, I can get them, you know, I, I can actually let people know that things are changing. So lots of questions that you can have when you start to, to share um, data among different teams. So. You wanna switch over one more? So a lot of this is about building a healthy data ecosystem. And this is really, you know, one of the main points is that this is a team sport. Uh, we do need to have the different teams communicating with each other uh, in order to understand how the data is flowing and what you can do about it and how to understand uh, between the different teams. There's implicit contracts often that are taking place between these different teams. So if we move on one. And so the key around this is the data lineage and the data lineage really talks about how the data is produced, how it's consumed, how it flows through the system. And we can do a lot of things around, under, by understanding that, all the different attributes around that. So both understanding the sources, understanding the targets, understanding how it's flowing, how long it takes to flow, all those characteristics, the inputs and outputs of each process that's taking place. So go on. And so we can talk about lineage and lineage shows how the data is flowing from its origins to the different destinations. And there's not just one lineage graph. There's lots and lots of different paths through the system that the data takes. And so if, even when we're starting from a single source, that data may be promulgated through many different chains of lineage to a lot of different targets for different purposes at different times. And so we generally, we want to understand that, understand the traceability of that information so that when we're looking at from a consumer's point of view, this data arrived, we want to be able to say, where did it come from and how did it get here? And then we want to be able to look at things, once we understand that, we can look at things such as impact analysis. We can say, if I somebody changes, changes something 
uh, down upstream from me, what how's that going to impact me? If I change this table, what are all the systems that are going to break behind it? Uh, and so we can get get to different kinds of impact analysis, and then we also get to data observability, in terms of understanding how the data is flowing. Is there a breakage in the chain? Is it taking too long? Is it in some cases taking too short? Uh, and and so we can start to get to a governance by expectation by observing what's actually taking place in the system as we collect the facts about how the data is moving. Let's go on. Okay. okay. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> so, I think my mic has slipped. Let's just slip the side up again. Okay, so let's start diving into what we would expect in lineage. Um, and the traditional approach to lineage um, it came really from the ETL engines. So this, uh, these are engines that move data from one place to another, or copy it really, copy and transform. So we had this idea of a graph, like a flowchart basically, showing how the data was moving between the systems. So here's an example of this type of job. It's reading from a file. It's looking up, up in a hive table and writing out to a Kafka topic. Now, also today, we have a lot of microservices and API calls. So everything is connected via request responses. So our lineage graph has to think about not just a flow of data, we have to think about control flows, and we also have to think about call responses. Uh, so, so let's start sticking things together because there are a lot of technologies that, that, that support lineage, and this is a good thing. <laughs> um, but on their own, they only tell us about one box. Uh, and one of the things that um, we've been doing as a, as a collection of projects is saying, well, things do come from a long way away and they do pass through a lot of technology. How do we bring that picture together so that we can really see that th how this data got to here? Um, and and that's, that's, that's the key challenge, is, is, is the heterogeneous nature of the way that we put systems together today. Now, if I'll just go back to this. You see here I've got different technologies here. Now, one of the things uh, one of our projects does, Egeria, is it has a set of types that describe all types of technology. And uh, so if I take that same graph and move it through, what you see here are the metadata elements that we would use to describe the shape of this inside Egeria. So we can capture... Um, and, and Dan will go into this in a little bit more detail. This is what we call design lineage, which is the structure of how things have been implemented um, in, inside Egeria. But that's all great. We know what's deployed, but what actually ran. Uh, and that actually is not what we do in Egeria. We're focused very much on exactly um, the structure and how things flow. So Dan, you want to go into a little more? Sure. So as Mandy mentioned, we, we can simplify things in, by thinking about design lineage and operational lineage. Design lineage really represents your intent. This is how I intend things to operate. This is how I'm going to transform the data from one thing to another, how I'm going to deploy that out. But when you do that design, that design may give you multiple paths to take through the system there's not just a single way through. It may be that if the data is, let's say, critical data, it goes down this path. If it's less critical data, it goes down that path. If it's potential fraud, it goes down maybe a third path. And so uh, what you want to also do is understand what really happened. And that's really what you can see through the operational lineage, is you see what, in fact, happened. How long did it take? Where did it really flow? What systems did it touch? Did, where did the data really come from? How many rows got moved on this process run? All those kinds of details are part of the operational lineage that we can see through the system. And that we can, by, by looking at that, we can understand both how the system is operating well and how it could operate better and what to do when the system fails. <laughs> And, and when and did it actually fail? Because you can see that suddenly I'm not seeing rows move through my operational lineage in this particular path. There's something that broke, maybe. And so that's, that's again, why we need to look at these things. Thank you. So, so in terms of um, Egeria, as I said, um, from our perspective on our project, 
we were very good at design lineage. We can capture all sorts of uh, information from different technologies and show how things should work. But this operational aspect became, you know, it was a problem to us. We didn't really have capability for it. So as we started to hear about these other pro two projects, Open Lineage and Marquez, we started to realize that between us, we could pull together um, a, a, a good story. Um, and particularly since, as you start to examine this problem and the way systems work together, it's not, a, it's not a simple division between the technology that produces design lineage and the technology that produces operational lineage. So if we start to think about something very simple, um, here's a process that takes data from one database and writes it out to another. So from a design lineage point of view, this is the sort of um, metadata that we would capture in something like Ageria. And then when the process is run over time, we would have lots of process instances being captured. And this is what we would call operational lineage. So this is saying that the process ran three times. Um, and in each case, we transferred a certain number of records between the two servers. So we, we know how often it's running and how much data is being transferred. So that's very simple separation between what we knew at deployment time and what we're getting from observing the, the, the runtime. But now let's think of files. Now files are much more problematic because they appear when things run. <laughs> They're not necessarily deployed out of a CI CD pipeline. So what we may know at deployment time is that um, we're gonna create source files. They're gonna appear say in a landing area and we're going to put them somewhere depending on the logic in the process. And that we're deploying a process that's going to be monitoring the landing area and creating things as, go, as they go past. So as the process runs, we're picking up information about source files and each one is creating a new instance of the process that is creating the destination file. So that capture of lineage is, not, is operational in exactly the same way as above, but it's also creating the design lineage for this at the same time. So you can imagine that uh, the operational lineage is being harvested to create the equivalent design lineage that we would have had at deployment time for the database case. So the distinction between operational and design lineage is actually quite fuzzy. And you say, well, maybe you just need this then, you don't need the thing above. But actually, each engine uses this diff its own way of identifying things. And so the uh, more traditional catalogue that understands the relationship between things is then able to stitch together the knowledge that we get from the different engines. So um, the two work very well in, 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 um, together because we have a knowledge base and then we, ha we can see what's running and um, we can correlate the two perspectives using a combination of the knowledge from both, both um, areas. Right, Dan. Okay, and that really sets up the motivation for the Open Lineage project. Um, it's really about how do we get to some of these common interfaces that allow us to publish these events out from all the different technologies so that they can be consumed and that we can link them together. So, go on. So, uh, Open Lineage is an open standard uh, for the collection of the lineage information from the pipelines as they are running from the different technologies. And if we go on, and where we can see that it fits in is that there's both producers of this information and consumers of this information. And so some of the producers might be libraries such as Pandas or runtime such as Spark, DBT, and Airflow that can produce the open lineage events and that can be consumed by technologies such as Amundsen, which is another data catalog, or Ageria, or Marquez, or, or anything else that wants to listen to these events as if they're taking place. And so before we had open lineage, if, if you had a, a uh, metadata catalog, such as Amundsen or, or Ageria for that matter, then you would have to write special adapters to each of the different engines to go and capture their kinds of events, right? And so you would end up basically with a rat's nest of different kinds of connectors. And every time one little thing changed, everybody had to go rush around and change all their adapters to be able to consume that, that, that information at that point. Whereas with Open Lineage, we go on, 
uh, we can get a nice smooth transition. We make life easier for everybody, both the producers and the consumers. And in fact, we add more value because we make it easier to tie these things together. And that's really the main goal behind the open lineage. So the open lineage contributors, let's move forward one, mm -hmm. uh, include projects such as Pandas, Marquez, DPT, Amundsen, Great Expectations on the quality side, Microsoft, Iceberg, Parquet, and others are looking to join as well and looking at how to participate. And we strongly encourage that community to continue to develop and grow. It makes everybody's life easier. Okay. All right. So, so I'm going to now talk about the, t the, the work that we did together as our projects. Um, so um, this is actually what the open lineage standard is. My mic is slipping again. Um, this is all it does. And this is its power, actually. The fact it does, it, 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 it defines um, a structure of an event that is an open lineage event. And it's called the run event and it defines an HTTP endpoint. And that is HTTP, not HTTPS. And that, well, that becomes significant a little bit later. So the idea is that an engine like Spark, uh, when it's running, it just is formatting its own logs into this run event and publishing it to an endpoint that it's given the address of when it runs. And that's, that's the standard that, that we have with it. The event is quite straightforward. It has an, an event type which says, are we starting, stopping, doing something else? Um, and you can describe the job that run, the job parent, and the inputs and the outputs. That's roughly those sections. Um, and then we have facets. And these facets are what the different technologies can do and add. And in fact, we could pull a, an open lineage event, say, into a Jira, a Jira called Augmented, and add new facets and then push it out to somebody else. So it's not just the first person put, can put facets in. Downstream um, people who are um, consuming it can also add the facets. The facets are, def there are some facets defined in the standard and you can add your own. So it's extensible, you can experiment with new ideas and then when you're sure of a, a particular facet, then you can push it back into the standard. So that's how it, how it is organized. And here are some examples of the flows. And so if you think about this process that's running, there's an outer process and then three sub processes. So you see the starting and the stopping of um, the main process, then the first sub process that stops. Um, and the whole thing is tied together because the outer process is the parent of the sub processes. So you can, you can uh, reestablish the hierarchies within the processes that are running. Um, and um, the reference implementation is Marquez. So Marquez is um, a metadata repository that's designed to monitor the running of processes. That's its, that, that's, it, that's its focus area. And so it supports the HTTP endpoint. And whenever we're testing, we always, if it runs in Marquez, then, it, then, then the, the events are good. Uh, so it is, as I say, it's considered the, uh, the reference uh, implementation. Um, one of the things that I worked on is uh, a thing called the proxy backend. So the, because the endpoint is HTTP and that makes it nice and quick and easy to set up and things, you can't deploy the catcher in an enterprise environment. It needs to be kept very local to the actual runtime engine. So the proxy backend is deployed into that runtime engine, into the secure uh, enclave that the process is running in. Um, and then it publishes out the event. So it acts, as I say, as a proxy. Uh, so in the, the first instance, we use Kafka. Um, and so now the events are coming out very fast from the, the Spark engine. Uh, we only need to keep the, the proxy backend up and running at the same time as the engine. So we haven't got to keep it up <laughs> 24 by 7. Um, and, uh, and then we have the ability for enterprise capability to, to pick up the events from the Kafka topic. Um, and so here in the yellow boxes is Ageria, um, listening on the Kafka topic, pulling the events in and processing them, extracting the design lineage as we talked before, correlating things and augmenting the events. Um, so, as we're, so we're literally going from open lineage through to Ageria. Um, we also put in support for the HTTP endpoint for small, for, for the occasions when um, 
the organisation wants to go straight to Geria. Um, I suspect the proxy backend will be used more than this direct, but we wanted just to keep a, to have a, a complete implementation and have another endpoint that um, that that uh, um, over and above uh, Marquez and the uh, proxy backend. So it makes no difference whether it comes in through Kafka or through the HTTP endpoint. And then, um, so we're capturing. Uh, we also need to produce. So Ageria itself is a governance engine. It runs processes. Uh, and so it produces um, open lineage. It's a processing engine. Um, and so uh, here, here we have sort of capture of our normal metadata, database, databases and files and things that are going into the metadata environment. We're capturing uh, the lineage and we're correlating the two together. We're also publishing either the open lineage that came from an external engine, so it can be stored and processed later, or our own open lineage showing how I'll get the governance processes are running because we think it's as it, important that the governance is governed <laughs> um, as well as uh, as as the data that, it, that it's managing uh, the publishing could as we, we have a log store so you can we, we publish the events in their original format to the log store so any other process can can process it offline and we also can publish to Marquez um, and you can use Marquez's API to do additional analysis uh, on that on that work as well. And as Dan said, one of the things that becomes very important, particularly when you've got a lot of things running, you can't rely on people looking at the, the logs and trying to spot errors. You want systems to do that. That means you need to know what should happen. And those um, uh, uh, processes that know what should happen are then monitoring the logs to making sure that what you know what should happen is happening because generally it's easy to spot when something fails you get exceptions um, but when something doesn't happen that's much much harder because there's there's nothing happened right uh, but these types of uh, monitoring if it knows that the process is supposed to run every 10 minutes and nothing's happened for half an hour it can start raising alerts to say something has fallen over and we're missing something there so this is, this is bringing this together. You, we have the open lineage coming in. We have Marquez acting as one of the uh, uh, destinations for the uh, lineage for um, monitoring. And Nigeria is um, uh, receiving, augmenting, publishing uh, the open lineage. Um, plus also um, it can run the, the processes that, that, that do the validation um, of the operation environment. Uh, that's a bit tiny, um, but here's just an example of um, viewing the uh, the log store. So uh, it's useful to, for certain types of processes. You may need to provide proof that the process ran successfully, and so this log store can provide um, a place to. You might not keep it there forever, but as a place to to gather that information so that it it can be preserved for for later use. Um, and this is Marquez. So this mar this particular picture is Marquez showing a pro the run the run various runs of a governance process running in Nigeria. So we're now seeing not just Nigeria capturing and publishing, but also we're now using Marquez to monitor how the processes are operating within Nigeria, uh, which is which is really nice. Um, so. That's how we're doing on time, that's fine. Um, what was the value? We've shown you quite a lot of function. We've shown you what lineage is and why it's so important. But the thing that has been amazing for the three projects is each of us has our individual value that we're all proud of and our ways of working. But as we came together, not only did we sort of build this extra value between us, but each project became more mature so, um, for example, Algeria taught the Open Lineage team about SPDX tagging. Uh, Algeria learned about DropWizard, which gave us a really great way of producing lots of sample applications to drive Algeria in very, very many different ways. Um, we, uh, the Algeria team gave Open Lineage the proxy backend. So between us, we're not just collecting things together, but we're all enriching each other's communities through this collaboration um, and so I, th I think this has been to me the 
the, the beauty of this, not only has it solved a very difficult problem for um, a lot of people who are working with data, um, but our projects have got better as a result of the collaboration. So I think we're on to questions. So has anybody got any questions that, on what we covered or how, uh, or how the uh, projects work together? Yes. Yes. In, in, in these projects. In any of these projects. So these projects are all um, LFAI and data projects. Um, if you go to the LFAI and data site, you can see the projects listed. And for each project, you click on the tile, and it will show you who to how to contact and and, and get involved in the in the different uh, in the different projects. So for Algeria, for example, there's weekly calls, community calls, and we cover different topics every week. Um, and there's also office hours and mm -hmm. other things that, uh, that we have to help people get involved. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, do you have a roadmap that you could see sort of where you're headed and maybe you could like myself to join in a particular Yeah. So, so each project still operates independently. Um, uh, open Lineage is, they meet one month, once a month, um, and the aim there is, they've got two aims really, one is to capture, is, is, is to, to get the standardization of new facets from different aspects of processing, and also to bring in new integrations with the, the engines. They're much more focused on getting engines to produce Open Lineage than thinking about the consumers, but I think that's more of a state of, of time. Um, so that's really a lot of the calls we we have with Open Lineage is about new consumers and and uh, possible extensions to the standard. Um, Egeria has is a, is a is a very big project with lots of tracks. So there's there's um, tracks focused on uh, supporting security governance. There's tracks are focused on supporting data governance. Uh, we're doing a lot of work with sustainability at the moment, looking at how we help organisations think about sustainability, monitor um, and understand their operations in a way that uh, uh, means that they can start to improve the way they operate. So for each of those, we have a, a large scale roadmap that shows how each of these tracks, tracks are operating. Uh, generally, we have a community call every Wednesday and that's where different stages of those pieces are, are, are talked about. Um, but if you want to, to see more of how that roadmap goes, I mean, because it's open source, generally we release every month um, and that's so that we can keep the levels of software up to the latest levels of all our dependent software and whatever's ready goes. So we might, we can't, we can't say this will definitely be ready in, in October, but it's like this is the next thing that will come out and when it's ready it will be released. Does that, does that help? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's on, com, you know an ongoing flow of new integrations, new capabilities, mm -hmm. new use cases. It's it's a yeah, pretty it's, active project. Yeah, no, and going in many directions. So we've got other people here from from the Algeria team as well who who are contributing in, di in on different different tracks really. So. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Please. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, lots <laughs> actually. So, uh, so our um, sort of byline is open metadata and governance, and we started it about three or four years ago, and it was well, let's follow the standards. We want to be open, and what we did was we pulled together lots of standards around you know, catalogs and data descriptions, i.e., metadata about particular types of data into a patchwork quilt and that's our open type system comes from those standards. So what you see is although um, because we they, they overlap and we need to, to reconcile those standards, you say, well, it doesn't exactly spell how that particular standard works. But if you start looking at um, those standards just map very easily because they were the source of, um, of our type system. When it comes to governance, the standards like ISO 27001 for security maps straight onto the standard. 
the dammer staff marks max very very closely on the way that that we do things but what's fascinating is that the way data governance is described is very close to the way security governance is described and then you bring the ITIL stuff in and you can see oh wait a minute this is all the same and so Algeria defines things called governance domains and they're focused on each of these things but actually they can collaborate and things that are being done in security can help data governance so we allow that meshing of actions within the organization for the different domains is that does that help yeah. there's another dimension as well which is around management of standard values mm -hmm. and what we often call either valid values or reference data and so again you'll have different standards du jour de facto and de facto standards and of course local standards within companies around particular kinds of data right whether it's country names or or uh, area codes or whatever it's going to be there's hundreds or thousands of these and being able to capture those and use that as part of your quality program to validate that the data that you're seeing conforms to the standard sets of the reference values is incredibly important when you're trying to integrate the data together in order to gather meaning. And so Ajuria supports both the management of the reference data and the mapping of the reference data mm -hmm. and then tying that into semantics through, through glossary terms and other things. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Okay. Well, thank you so much for listening and uh, coming to this. I hope this was interesting. And uh, please connect with any of the three projects that we've talked about today. I think I might have put them on. Um, uh, they are, as I say, and we, and, and we continue, continue to meet and collaborate uh, to bring these, these projects together. So uh, thank you so much.